Hi, John LaRosa here with another edition of The Straight Scoop. Today I want to talk about something I call the scam economy or scam nation. That's what we're living in right now. I've been a business analyst for 25 years looking at all different industries, service industries, everything from daycare centers to diet programs, collection agencies, you name it. And it's my job and I make my living by observing these trends in the economy. And I've seen something in the economy since the last recession, the Great Recession, that's taking place and people may not even be aware of. That's what I call the scam economy. We have a weak recovery right now where the jobs that are being created are low wage service jobs. Working at McDonald's, Burger King, Target, Walmart, not the forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar a year good middle management jobs and top management jobs that are the backbone of the middle class or manufacturing jobs. No, in that space, that void that's been created by the economy not producing these good jobs and these good incomes, a lot of individuals and corporations have stepped in to prey on low-income households and consumers and people that are desperate to make a living and to put bread on their table and pay their mortgages. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to give you 14 examples today of industries and services and scams and con men that are looking to get your money out of your wallet and prey on the desperate people that are desperate for good jobs today, what I call scam nation. We'll take a pause and then we'll go into a PowerPoint presentation. Thank you. Okay, today we're going to talk about scam nation or the scam economy as I call it. I'm going to prove to you that there are companies and industries out there looking to take advantage of lower income consumers and middle class people, anybody that will fall for their scam. Here are some of the major scams that I see active now. Identity theft, of course, 16 million people are affected every year by identity theft. We all know what that is. Franchises that don't deliver what's promised. Multi-level marketing distributorships. Fraudulent tax return filers that use TurboTax to get refunds. Ponzi schemes. A lot more of them have been uncovered since Bernie Madoff. Bogus investments. Self-improvement internet mastery courses. Email investment and charity scams. Phone call hijacking. Hacking of your bank account. Rent to own stores. Payday loan services. Car title loans. Empty home hijacking or what's known as adverse possession laws in 21 states and for-profit and online universities. These are some of the things and some of the scams that are active right now in our economy. Okay, first, how did we get here? Well, the U.S. economic recovery has been extremely weak with poor prospects for finding good paying jobs those over $50,000 a year, even for educated workers with college degrees and years of experience. Investment opportunities are scarce, other than the stock market, and interest rates are at zero. So, this void in opportunity, and the opportunity to make good incomes and good wages, has been filled by lots of so-called gurus selling systems that promise us riches, and high self-employment income where anybody could do it. What do these scams have in common? Well, a couple of items. They say that no formal education or skills are needed. They promise you success if only you invest in yourself by buying my system within a certain time deadline because there's only a certain number of these systems or uh, projects or seminars that they're going to hold. They promise a high return on invested money and time. They promise a unique system not seen anywhere else 
before, the special sauce. They provide insider access to members, and of course you have to pay to become a member. They prey on those who have lost hope. Okay, what about some of the platforms where these scams operate? Well, basically it's everywhere. They say you can make easy money from YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, your website, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, your blog, Amazon, Kindle, eBay, you name it. They have a system for it. They have a way to make money, supposedly. Okay, first one we're going to talk about is... MLMs, multi-level marketers. The Direct Selling Association says direct selling and uh, multi-level marketing is worth over $31 billion in the U.S. today. And there are 16 million independent contractors now, which is near the peak, the high that's ever been reached. There are more out there now than ever before. There are more than two dozen multi-level marketing companies in the U.S selling weight loss products. There are public companies like Herbalife that are coming under fire and they are alleged to be pyramid schemes that take advantage of minorities. Fact, the average annual earnings per distributor for the 15 largest MLMs in the business based on market data research, research that I've done and my company has done, the average annual earnings per distributor were only $3,642 per year in 2012. That's before expenses. Of course, you do have expenses. You have advertising, you have marketing. You have to operate somewhere out of your house or an office. You have telephone expenses. You have the uh, initial startup cost of buying the distributor kit. So after expenses, you can see that it, people are not making a good full-time income off of this. Than it not even making a good part-time income. Okay, number two, bad franchises. They're coming under fire for unrealistic earnings claims, and there's a lot of lawsuits and attorney general's actions that have been levied against some, not all, some franchises are legitimate, but there are a lot out there that are not. After this latest recession, more people bought franchises to seek an established reliable business and to control their own destiny because they couldn't find jobs anywhere else. However, three to four years later, many of these people that bought these franchises for tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars investing their life savings, many of them are learning that those promises were lies. Some of the problems with, fr uh, with franchising include churning of accounts. That's where they take your best accounts from your territory and they resell them. They say that the service you were providing wasn't up to par, so the parent company has to take it back from you. When, in fact, you were providing good service, you were doing your job, it's just an excuse. And the contract is written in such a way so it's, it's really skewed toward the parent company's advantage. Franchises also often do a lot of price gouging on materials that they insist you must buy from the parent company. Uh, there was uh, uh, an example maybe 25 years ago with Carvel, the, the ice cream franchise, where you had to buy the dairy products from the, uh, the, the parent company and uh, you could get similar quality dairy products elsewhere for less money but they wouldn't let you buy it because that's how they make their money by marking up these commodity items and overcharging you. You also have territory encroachment as I mentioned sometimes they say that they won't put a uh, another uh, store in your territory but then they go ahead and do it anyway or put it just on the fringes of the territory so that's territory encroachment which affects your income little support once they collect the franchise fee 10 15 twenty thousand dollar upfront franchise fee and then you find that the support that they give you for advertising and marketing 
and setting up your systems and operations is just subpar. The commercial cleaning industry is one good example where you have uh, a lot of these franchises that just don't provide the support and they're in the business of collecting franchise fees, just selling more and more franchises and not doing their share. How do you protect yourself if you're a franchise owner or a prospective buyer of a franchise? Well, you have to read every page of that franchise disclosure document and have your lawyer review it too. Check the company with the Better Business Bureau. Call franchisees. How are they doing? In the franchise disclosure document, by law, they must publish a list of the current franchise owners, their names, their addresses, and their phone numbers. Call 10 of them and find out how happy they are with the franchise or unhappy. What are the problems? Check the internet. Do a search on Google or the internet for complaints and lawsuits against the company to see what you're getting into before you pay that hefty franchise fee. Okay, number three, coaching and internet mastery systems. These are systems by uh, so-called self-improvement gurus. Here's a few names. Callan Rush, Glenn Dietzel, Eben Pagan, Jay Boyer, Russell Brunson, Mike Koenigs, Ryan Dice. These are all experts or so-called experts in various ways to make money off the internet or your website or your blog. And they have these special systems with a special sauce, special software that's going to give you the secrets you need to make money off the internet. Now you have to ask yourself, if these experts discovered the golden goose, the secret formula, why are they willing to give it to you, even for a price? Why wouldn't they be selfish and save it for themselves and make a fortune off of it? Why create more competition for themselves by selling it to hundreds or thousands of other people? Well, as one self-improvement market tracker said to me, the real money is not in being a personal coach, it's in teaching someone how to become a coach. So that says it all. By the way, personal coaching is a really competitive, oversaturated, crowded field. And everybody and his brother calls themselves a personal coach or a life coach. Okay, Internet Mastery Systems continued. They claim to help you build massive traffic for your website, write a best-selling book or ebook quickly, create information reports that you can sell, hold jam-packed seminars, get high-paying coaching clients, or get high-paying motivational speaking gigs. Those are the, some of the things that they try to hook you on. What they offer, they, for a price, will be your mentor and coach. They'll give you special software, they'll develop sales funnels and automatic templates that you can use and landing pages, and the ability to generate an automatic online income. Set it and forget it after taking their course or seminar. So they say. However, what they don't tell you is for these systems, which range in price from anywhere from $50 to $3,000, they are heavily advertised via email and they give you a free report or a video or a series of videos or a webcast to whet your appetite. They make you feel like a lazy loser if you don't buy your system. They aggressively hound you with daily email follow-ups. You leave your email address on one of these um, landing pages for, for one of these systems that reaches you by email and I guarantee you, you'll start getting daily emails or several, at least several emails a week with another video pitching their system to you and more reasons why you should sign up for their systems. And they'll give you all of this free content and at the end, they're going to hit you with the sales pitch to buy their system, which 
many times can be expensive. And some of the common themes of these gurus, well, they always started out broke. I was bankrupt ten years ago before I discovered this formula. I spent years of research and reading books and testing to find the magic formula. It's always, why is it always somebody who is bankrupt? How come these gurus never come from middle class families where they were making a good income? I wonder about that. Now, the reality of it is that these systems require almost full time work on your part to be successful. Years, not weeks or months, but they don't tell you that. They rarely take only part-time work, three or five or six or ten hours a week. If you really want to understand these systems, which are complicated, and you have to do everything right for them to work, it requires almost a full-time job. These gurus endorse and pitch each other's systems to lend credibility. Okay, number four, Ponzi schemes. Here's a good quote. Only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. Since the Madoff era, Bernie Madoff, there have been 500, more than 500 Ponzi schemes worth $50 billion that have been discovered. As new investor funds dried up and redemptions soared, Ponzi schemes collapsed. 157 alone in 2008 to 2009. The number of schemes bottomed out or leveled off in 2011, but they've risen, risen since then in number. The average scheme size was worth $98 million. Where are a lot of these Ponzi schemes located? New York, Florida, California. They account for the bulk of the losses and 170 cases. A good uh, website to find more information on Ponzi schemes is ponzitracker.com. Check that out. Okay, some red flags to identify Ponzi schemes to protect yourself. The interest rate or the profit that they promise you is significantly higher than that available elsewhere. Today that would be 10% or higher per year. The company consists of one person. They have a lack of financial data for inspection. They're investing in overseas investments. They're complicated investments that you can't understand easily. The bottom line is don't trust anyone, even relatives. Invest with a large company or a mutual fund, not one person. Okay, number five, scam number five. Filing fraudulent tax returns. Tampa, Florida was really the epicenter of an illegal tax fraud scheme a few years ago, but it turned out to be a nationwide problem, not just Tampa, Florida. This involved the filing of bogus tax returns using TurboTax software and stolen identities. Once the person had certain information like a social security number, a birthday, address, etc., they would file a bogus tax return using TurboTax and uh, claim a refund and the IRS, which is understaffed, undermanned, would uh, process these and send out these refunds usually loaded onto debit cards. And then these con men would go to their local bank and, and, uh, and just, uh, you know, empty the uh, amount on the debit card and take out the cash. The scheme was worth $449 million in South Florida alone in 2013, and the IRS estimates the scam was worth $4 billion nationwide. Who got scammed? Dead people, the elderly, prisoners, and others. Refunds were sent out to bank accounts through debit cards, they were wired, the money was wired uh, to themselves by the con men, or they used gift cards. All that was needed was a social security number, birth date, address, bank account data, 
And this could be easily accessed by unscrupulous healthcare employees, for example. Okay, number six, identity theft. 15 million Americans affected, 7% of adults per year. $50 billion in losses, the average loss per person, $3,500. Widespread identity theft involves the theft of cell phone and landline phone service, cable and satellite TV service, water, gas, electric, utilities, medical insurance, auto financing, and government benefits. How? Well, the crooks steal your wallet. They steal the mail that's in your mailbox, which most people leave unattended. And sometimes they don't pick up the mail until the next day. Dumpster diving, email phishing, mining your social media pages on uh, Facebook, Twitter, or they hack government and corporate databases. So what can you do to protect yourself against identity theft? Buy a shredder and use it. Once you pay that credit card uh, payment, shred Shred the statement. Change your passwords often. Don't respond to or open dubious emails that look suspicious from people that you haven't heard of, especially from places like Nigeria, Africa. Don't put personal data like your date of birth on Facebook. Collect your mail properly from your mailbox or have it delivered to a P.O. box. Check your three credit bureau files, TransUnion, Equifax and uh, Experian at least once a year for suspicious activity. Check your credit card statements every month for unauthorized purchases and suspicious activity. Don't share your social security number with anyone in labs unless absolutely necessary. And don't store your personal data in the cloud. Okay, number seven, email scams that involve lotteries, inheritances, and investments. I get a daily barrage of bogus emails, and you probably do also in your spam folder, from people overseas. A lot of times they come from the UK, the United Kingdom, and Nigeria. Don't even open those, and certainly don't click on the links within the emails. It's usually a hard luck story. The person has dire health problems. They need an operation right away. They want you to wire them money. They claim to be your uh, niece or nephew or some relative. Don't believe it. If it was your relative, they'd call you on the phone. Or you've, they say that your email has won an international lottery. It's been chosen. Your email address has been selected. If you'll just pay a small processing fee to claim your millions. Really? Does anyone still f fall for these scams? Okay, they're still being used, though, and people are still falling for them. Number eight, hacking of your accounts. Threats are coming now consistently every day from the U.S., from China, from Russia, the U.K., from Canada, from Nigeria. And there, there's not too much you can do about this other than changing your passwords often, because they're usually hacking the big banks and other financial institutions and retailers. But nevertheless, it's another scam. Scam number nine, rent-to-own stores. These are the stores that cater to the subprime market, the low-income consumers who can't pay for things like TVs and furniture and appliances and electronics up front. So they pay over time. However, they wind up spending $1,400 for an iPad, for example, that may cost $400 normally, $1,900 for a laptop, $2,000 for a washer-dryer. Obviously, that's a lot more than if you paid up front. The main players in this scheme are uh, chains like uh, companies like Rent-A-Center, Court, Aaron's, and Buddy's Home Furnishings. You find a lot of these in Florida and in the southern states. There are 10,000 of these rent-to-own stores nationwide and the number is growing. It's an 8.5 billion dollar industry. 
the interest rate on these short-term loans, if you want to call them that, exceed 100% per year. The, the transactions are classified as leases to avoid the state usury laws. The state usury uh, laws usually put a, a maximum on the interest rate that uh, a company can charge you. I think it's about 22 or 26 percent. But these stores get around that by classifying these transactions as leases. The banks, the big banks, have abandoned the low income subprime market so these consumers have nowhere else to go but these chains of, of rent-to-own stores. Most of these loans fail and up to 75% of them result in the merchandise being repossessed. Scam number 10, payday loans. Payday lending units are a far less expensive to start up than a pawn shop, for example, that, that's a brick and mortar store. Nevertheless, it's a $1 billion market. 38 states have specific statutes that allow for payday lending. And payday lending, if you're not familiar with it, is you give them your, uh, your pay stub from your company and they'll give you a loan with interest based on that income. Consumer groups have long criticized the practice for charging triple-digit interest rates and accuse lenders of preying on low-income consumers. But they're still around. The fees from these payday loans by pawn shop chains such as Cash America accounted for more than half of the company's net revenues. So it's profitable, definitely profitable for them. Scam number 11, car title loans. Now, this doesn't take place as mu in as many states as payday loans, but it's still out there. And these are services that, where you offer up your car title in exchange for a loan. These are for customers where the, the car's title is posted as collateral for a loan. The customer keeps the car, but if the loan becomes delinquent, the car is repossessed. So if a low-income consumer's car is taken away, so is their livelihood because they usually need a car to get to work. It's available in 21 states and they charge up to 300 percent interest per year. The loan amount is usually far less than what the car is worth. The median loan being $845, the median car value $3,150. Lenders may even be sneaky enough to put GPS tracking devices in the car that can locate and in some cases disable the car if the payment is late. The next scam, empty home hijacking scams. They're called adverse possession laws. If a house is empty through foreclosure or the owner passes away, a squatter can take possession of the house, improve it, pay taxes and live in it and you can take possession of the land and house in 7 to 21 years. It varies by state if the title holder doesn't claim possession with a certain, within a certain time. Texas, California and Florida, many other states have these laws on the books and believe me they're being used right here in the Tampa Bay area in uh, Hillsborough County. It presents an opportunity for squatters to break in, change the locks, live there rent-free or rent it out to other people, and squatters can be evicted, but it takes time. So if it takes nine months for that squatter to be evicted and all the paperwork to go through and, and through the, the courts and, and trying to identify the owner and, and locate them, it could be nine months. So meanwhile, the squatters live rent-free. Okay, next scam. Phone call hijacking. These hackers sign up to lease premium rate phone numbers. They're usually uh, 900 numbers. The web-based service gives the person that takes out that lease a cut of the action. The hackers break into a business phone system. They make calls on that premium number on weekends when the employees aren't there and they can make 
hundreds of calls at the same time, forwarding the calls to the pay line. The hacker gets a cut of the charges delivered via wire transfer, Western Union, MoneyGram. So as a result, the premium rate resellers are multiplying rapidly. Okay, finally, the last scam that I've identified, and I'm sure there are more than are covered by this PowerPoint, but the last one I'll talk about is for-profit universities. Many of these for-profit colleges and universities graduate students with a high amount of debt and little chance of repaying it. Many of the jobs that they promise are not there when they graduate. These are student loans unwritten by the government. They're easy to get. However, the Department of Education has imposed regulations after finding, you know, un uncovering this can of worms. The DOE found that 48% of for-profit schools failed to meet the 35% repayment rate for recent graduates. The for-profit schools attract low-income students. The courses are more expensive. And 53% of the students owed $30,000 or more at these for-profit schools, where only 12% of uh, the students owed more than that at public schools. These are schools like Strayer University, Kaplan, Kaiser University. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of them that advertise heavily. So the bottom line is the government is getting fleeced as these students default. There's a 15% default rate on student loans for these for-profit schools. Okay, so the bottom line is there's a con man or scamster waiting for you 24-7 online at every corner to separate you from your money. Be aware, ask lots of questions, ask for references, check the Better Business Bureau, search online for negative company reports. If it sounds too good to be true, think twice. It probably is. So I hope I've proven to you today that in the absence of good jobs being created in this weak economy that we have now, where supposedly the unemployment rate is only 5.8%, that's a whole other story, don't believe that, it's probably double or triple that. Um, these scams that have uh, crept up to fill the void are many and they, they take many different forms. So I've tried to educate you of about 14 or 15 of them. Like I said, uh, there's probably many more out there, but these are the main ones that I've identified as a business analyst. So if you think we're living in a legitimate economy, think again. We're living in scam nation.